Howdy! So I've seen some people asking for a perks guide for, well, a while now. So today is finally the day where I'm going to go through this. But before we start, there are four major things I want to warn you about when it comes to perks. Number one, there is very rarely a situation in which two perks should be used 100% of the time on a dragon. There are some exceptions based on skills, but for the most part, many dragons can take a variety. Number two, if you've already invested perks into a dragon, it isn't always worth the gems and the perks loss to take them off using gems. Number three, in some cases, it is very much personal preference what you want to use. And four, the best perks can depend on the entire team. So it's not always just on an individual dragon basis. So with these four things in mind, let's start. And just for context, I'm talking about all of this in terms of their use in Masters Arena, which is arguably the hardest part of Dragon City and the true late game battling experience in the game currently. This does also mean that skill-based matchmaking will skew with the thoughts and opinions on this slightly, but that's unavoidable in current Dragon City in 2024. So just for some basic knowledge to make sure we're all on the same page currently, as of August 31st, 2024, you're able to place a max of two different types of combat perks onto a dragon. The rarity or classification of a dragon determines how many of each perk can be placed on a dragon. So for instance, my legendary duo dive dragon can use up to 30 damage perks and 15 phoenix perks. My high ashwing dragon, however, can only use up to 20 damage perks and 10 phoenix perks. You can obtain perks from leaderboard events, collections, wizards hollow, arena, and other random means as you play the game, but arena and collections tend to be the most reliable ways at the moment, but all of them help. So firstly, when considering placing perks on a team, we need to split this into dragons that do not have skills. So this includes anything from commons to heroics and dragons that do have skills. But for those that don't have skills, I do not suggest placing perks on anything below a category nine legendary as perks can be a bit difficult to obtain and category nine dragons or above are gonna be your best options. You can actually check which category the dragon is using Ditlep. It's a shame it's not in game, but Ditlep is the source for this. So now with skillless dragons, you can take a variety of different perks on these. And some will say to always take Phoenix or always take HP on heroics. But in my experience, I don't actually agree with this. So in my arena battles in Masters 1, Masters 2, Masters 3, when I'm using a team full of skillless dragons, for instance, I try to always ensure that at least one of the dragons is holding a Reaper perk. That doesn't mean that all three of your dragons need to hold one. Just one of them is enough to get the last hit on any enemies with the Phoenix perk. And since Reaper perks are handed out via leaderboard events currently, like Cotton Candy at a Fairground, I normally try to place at least 6% on my team, sometimes even more if I'm running into more enemies with higher Phoenix percentages. One of your dragon could hold, say, Phoenix plus Reaper or Reaper plus Damage just to be the dedicated damage dealer for that arena. Another could then take HP plus Phoenix and be the tank. And then the third one can, well, take just about anything, really. But if one of your dragons is typically weak to the opponents you'd be facing in their respective arenas, such as Seismic, you might not want to give them HP perks because they might be a bit useless. Although, in saying that... I recently had the last arena where we had Seismic plus Michonne, the Walking Dead dragon, with Bunker available, which meant that Seismic was never going to be crit anyway, meaning that extra HP to be a bigger tank wasn't necessary, but the bonus HP, because he was a tribute, definitely helped quite a bit. So different arena bands and element boosts can change things a lot. You're never going to have 100% perfect perks for every single different arena and team, unless you have like 50 plus maxed out dragons and dedicated for every single type of arena possible, which would take either many years of grinding or a lot of money. 
So now when we talk about dragons with skills, this is where things get a little bit complicated. If you want to enhance the dragon's skills, then you can use specific perks to do this. I'm going to list some examples now. However, they won't always be 100% true in every single scenario ever, but they will be typically the better option in a lot of cases. So usually it's one perk in particular that these dragons capitalize on. Number one, Vampires and Corrupteds damage perk. So the reason why Vampires and Corrupteds would be suggested to take damage perks and in many cases a max out of their damage perk place would be because the HP they receive from Leech is directly based on how much damage they inflict. So as you can imagine, if you want to suck back more HP, you need to do more damage. So many people therefore also take Phoenix plus damage perks on vampires because even if a dragon's Phoenix is used, they can actually sometimes heal all the way back to full HP by using Leech. Vampires do have secondary abilities as well, but I personally find that most of their core usage comes from their Leech and the secondary st skill is just an additional extra bit. But if you do want to focus on the second skill for a vampire instead, feel free to do that and change your perks accordingly. Number two, Karmas, HP and Phoenix. So Karmas are very much RNG, so random as to how effective they are. Some battles you're going to block 15 times in a row, other times you won't block for 20 times. However, the more chances you give the Karmas to block, the more chances they have of, well, actually blocking and then dealing big damage back to the enemy. So this is the reason why most suggest to max out the HP perks and stack a lot of HP. Uh, phoenix perks additionally to the hp perks as even a karma that has used up their phoenix can still in theory solo an entire team if they get lucky number three guards and the walking dead dragons hp and phoenix so the main use of these two types of dragons is their shield which negates damage and also negates crits so these dragons shouldn't be used for their damage capabilities as they are a category 9 and their best skill is their shield. In order to maximize the usage of shield on your team, you need them to live for as long as possible. So similarly to Karmas, these dragons typically will benefit the most from HP and Phoenix perks. Some do try to argue differently sometimes for the Walking Dead dragon since they have their secondary skill but I don't think their secondary skills are as useful as their main shield or bunker skill. Number four, Berserkers and Eternals Reaper Park. So Berserkers have their damage increase when they knock out an opponent. So these are some of the best users of the Reaper perk out there. You can swap them into last hit an enemy, activate Reaper to take out the Phoenix, and then get the damage boost. So because of this, you'll primarily see people running high Reaper percentages and either damage or Phoenix on these dragons. I think damage plus Reaper is a disgustingly annoying combination depending on the team, and pairing these with a healer or a shield can be, well, very annoying to deal with in the arena. Eternals do work slightly differently, however Reaper works well with their early last hit, so these can also take Phoenix and damage perks. Number five, Redemptions with Revive, Phoenix, Redemptions with No Remorse, Damage. So we have two classes of redemptions, and typically those with Revive, people will at the very least place a Phoenix on them to be as annoyingly tanky as possible. Having dragons like this just helps to last for more turns and that way you can get more cooldowns going for your skills on other dragons and just generally being a nuisance. Revive Redemptions used to be much more vital back in the old arena where your dragons would go on cooldown if they were defeated in a battle, but they definitely still have their uses now. The No Remorse Redemptions aren't the most used VIPs out there, but if you do use them, you can use a damage perk on them since this does support their skill. Number six, Ascended V1 and V2 and Arcanas with Arcana Absorption damage perk. So Ascended Dragons with the Divine Sacrifice skill are typically the most used because they're both great damage dealers and they also heal all allies. So they're like a two-in-one. 
Arcanas that have Arcana Absorption are very, very similar, but the general idea is that the more damage they do, the more healing they get. So they're actually also similar to vampires, but all of the skills work slightly differently. It's common to see damage plus phoenix perks used on these dragons to deal big damage and also heal up tons. So they're a massive pain to deal with in arenas when they have the damage and phoenix perks maxed out. So these are the main families of dragons that I wanted to address. However, some other dragons to include some notes on include those such as spiked dragons. I'm actually not going to go through each of these different dragons today as I have not used all of them enough myself yet. Plasmas. They are mainly used for their passive, so some people stack HP perks on them just to ensure that they survive for as long as possible and act like the team's tank and stop any vampires. Harpy is a very good tank, especially since they have extra healing on their ability skill. Dual Perception. A Phoenix plus Reaper or Reaper plus damage perk really does annihilate people in arenas using Dual Perception. You can take a couple of combos, but I absolutely hate facing Reaper Dual Perceptions the most. Dual Parliament can take a few different options, to be honest. High Redemption Norn. So the calculations have been done, but you can actually use either damage or HP perk on Norn. It's normally Phoenix plus either HP or Phoenix plus damage, but both are good options. It depends on whether you want the additional damage or whether you want the additional HP for your team. They do scale with the skill differently. Extractors. I don't think these dragons are good enough to use in their current form on a team. However, more damage to get the healing off or just more HP in general would be fine. Quantums. I also don't suggest using these dragons generally, but I treat these dragons like dragons with no skill, so a variety of perks can be used on them. Regular Titans, another set of dragons that aren't the best these days, although they are still usable, but I also treat these the same as skillless dragons since their skill is a passive one and it doesn't benefit from perks. So those are my general thoughts and advice for perking your dragons. Generally, the heroic VIPs follow the same rules as their families in general for boosting their skills, but these dragons are so good that you could use usually anything on them and still bring havoc to the arena. If you did screw up any of your perk placements, then oftentimes it isn't the end of the world. I would change to damage, damage perks on Vampires, Ascendeds, and Arcanas if you don't already have them on there. But to be honest, Dragon City is a very far cry from a competitive game. And I often think that people see perks as a lot more important than they actually are. Skill-based matchmaking alone makes it so that even a suboptimal build or full team can win all of their arena battles even in Masters 3. So while I do recommend these things to you today, don't be surprised if you see people at the highest ranks of Master with level 40 dragons and very questionable perks on them.